<laughs> well, welcome back. Get one more time behind the why. Behind the why. Behind the why. I got something I want to talk to you about today, though, that is just been really stirring my gut. Mm-hmm. I'm going to just, I'm not, I want to read just a quick piece of scripture to you real quick okay. here. In Romans chapter one, right? Uh, Paul is talking, his great treatise to the church, uh, the letter to the, to the church in Rome. He says, uh, in uh, chapter one, verse 26 is for this reason, God gave them over to degrading passions. I'm not that part. I, I got ahead of myself. Forgive me. It says, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal powers, divine nature have been clearly seen. Even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for the image of the form of the corruptible. It talks about them knowing who God was, mm-hmm. ignoring who he was. Exchanging wisdom for foolishness, right? And to the point that God kind of gave up and said, "Hey, you want your stupid? You Go can ahead have and your be stupid, stupid, right?" And, and the the point of the stupid I want to bring you to here is in in, the, in Galatians, where Paul is talking to the church. He says, "In Christ, there's neither male nor female. Mm-hmm. There's neither Jew, Jew nor, nor Gentile, Gentile, slave right. nor free." And yet, as I knock the microphone over, uh, here in the church, contemporarily mm-hmm. speaking, all I'm hearing about is white this and black this and and green and orange and and we <laughs> seem to be in the church so crazy about these subgroups right and yet the bible is like no mm-hmm. you're children of god or you're not so the question i'm going to pose to you today and we don't talk about is white guilt <sighs> this conversation seems to be <laughs> everywhere everywhere so talk to, come on you it know it, it baffles me. Um, a good example of this, I'm always on Twitter. Yeah. And this was probably about a couple of weeks ago. And a well-known female church leader yes. and speaker. I, I know of whom you speak. You know, is it wrong to say the name? Uh, did she say it? Yeah, Beth did, Moore. Okay, okay, Beth Moore. She Beth said Moore. I, yeah. You know, she just, okay, bless her. But there's some things where I'm just like, really? Seriously. And so she had tweeted out about um, white supremacy and just like making this claim about white supremacy and how it's on the rise. And I'm like, and I saw other people um, respond to her too, being like, why, why do you feel the need to make it that, like joining this, this cultural hot button issue? You see, the thing that drives me crazy about it is not that people are doing, because people are always saying stupid stuff. There's yeah. always been groups and people always say dumb things. But what bothers me is when the church and, mm-hmm. and perceived leaders in the church try to endorse right. obvious stupidity, mm-hmm. obvious stupidity. One of the other things I want to talk about in our time here today is how we as Christians, how you as a Christian could even in the remotest part of your mind right. support the idea of abortion. But that's we'll mm-hmm. talk about that later. But let's get back to this issue of, of this white guilt. Right. Why is it on one hand that we, we especially our, our brothers and sisters who are, who are white, Want to feel guilty? What is the, what is the payoff in this? What is the payoff? I, just, in, in I feel feeling bad guilty for people. For things that they didn't do, right? Well, I don't feel guilty. Well, well, well Ryan, <laughs> you know, we're bringing you into the family because I'm saying this whole idea of and, and you shouldn't feel guilty. Yeah. Have you owned a slave, Ryan? No. See, he's there. He hasn't owned Not a slave. Even once. I, I, even once. You know, just <laughs> I, I, I look at this and these people are breaking themselves down and know. like you don't understand. It well, is, like, well, here, what? here, here, what? here's why it gets me. There's one thing for people in the world to do that. Yes. I see them do it all the time. And even I'm kind of like, stop hating your own people. I'm like, it, it crack, it's kind of sad, but, it, it's so you sad. know, but when the church adopts that too, I'm like, just because it's culturally relevant in the world, why does the church feel the need to see, join that bandwagon? This is what I mean. When the Bible here in Romans says quite plainly mm-hmm. that you reject the wisdom of God, right? You don't, you, you recognize him as God, but you reject his wisdom mm-hmm. because something else sounds good, right? And I understand the compulsion. I really do. Uh, when I married your mother, I remember we were talking and I was introducing her to some of my history having grown up in Selma. And like I said, right. born in the early 60s, I grew up doing the civil rights movement. And mm-hmm. granted, I was a child when these big events were starting to take place. Uh, still only a preschool student when uh, Dr. King and the, and the Great March took place in Bloody Sunday. But still... Uh, living in that environment and growing up there in the environment of Jim Crow South and mm-hmm. all those things that happen. And I was talking to your mother about this and I remember talking to her and she was just getting this tood on, right? 
And I was laughing because I said, look here, woman, you better chill out. She goes, what? I said, you about to start hating white folk. <laughs> <laughs> she said, but we've been evil. I said, yeah, that was 30 years ago. So <laughs> right. Come on, let's just, you know, let's go forward from here. Uh-huh. You know, and because the tendency is that you want to. And right. I understand the emotion. You know, I understand the emotion, but even so, I actually don't understand it. And I think this whole white guilt movement is from Satan Oh, oh because course. I'm like, it makes no sense. Um, even this was like a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago now, there was this, another Christian leader, but she has her title as a anti-racism theologian. So I'm like, okay, so you're identifying. It's, it's oxymoronic. I was like, you're identifying as an anti-racist theologian, whatever that means. Okay. But she was speaking at a well-known Christian women's conference. Right. And she basically had said that whiteness is wicked, it's, see, and and, that's, and that that's and that stupid. and that the white that her white sisters need to embrace their true ethnic identity. I'm like, what does that even mean? What I want to say to a statement like that is, in, in all seriousness, I know I'm kind of laughing and joking with you, but what I really want to say to a statement like that is that's demonic. It is because black is no better than white Mm-mm. or yellow or red right. or whatever. Did, the the, the uh, denomination or identifier you want to to hang on. Mm -hmm. There is not one that is superior to the other. I just referenced the scripture in Galatians where God, talking about uh, through the the Apostle Paul, identifying his chosen people, Israel. He says, in Christ. Now, in Christ, that means you are a born-again Christian. Mm -hmm. In Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek. Right. There is neither male nor female. There's neither bond or free. So that's free folk, not free folk. Right. Male folk, not, not male, male folk. folk. <laughs> Jew and non Jew. That's everybody in the whole world, right? <laughs> Cover, he, says, everybody. he says quite plainly that in Christ, those things don't matter. Right. So then when we bring an emphasis to those things, we're going backwards. We're going, we're going backwards. away exactly. from the cause of Christ. Instead of the body of Christ coming mm-hmm. together saying, hey, no, 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 I'm not better than you, nor am I worse than you. As a matter of fact, according to Romans, what? We've all sinned and come short of the glory right. of God. And so for these people to come in and start trying to separate this out, mm-hmm. it, it sounds like you're being intelligent. But what you really are is being ignorant. Mm-hmm. As one brother said, uh, brother John MacArthur said in one of his messages, is that when you put that adverb in front of the word justice, he says it doesn't need. It already describes itself. Right. So if I say social justice, then what you're saying is is that it's a special type of justice. Right. So is that different than regular justice? If it's, it's justice, like, it's justice. It's like saying it's a hate crime. <laughs> uh, oh, I, he killed his brother because he's black. Oh, he'd be less dead if he was white. <laughs> That's the stupidest thing I've ever or heard. Or it'd be less hateful if he yeah, was white. <laughs> and he dragged his brother behind the car. And it's a horrible thing, right? But if he dragged a white guy, would he be any less dead? Right. I think that's the thing, too, that people, especially I'm talking about people in the church sometimes forget, is that hate is hate, okay? Yes. Evil is evil. Evil is evil. Crime is crime. Crime is crime. And it's been happening since the beginning of time. And so when we go back to this, we go back to this, it cripples the church. And that's yeah. what that's what, that, that's what I want to get back to right. is because you, you think you're being, you know, this empathy. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm going to... I feel so sorry for this brother. But what you really are doing is allowing people to stay in brokenness. Right. Because I'm not calling it out. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying to you, no, when you want to insist that your white brother or sister feel guilty for something their ancestors did, then I'm saying to you, then that is racism. Yeah. You are saying to them that you have special rights because you are not white. Mm -hmm. And that's that's sin well and it goes back to what we've talked about before in the sense that it also puts the the uh attention onto your ethnic grouping so then if you're black you know i'm a black christian or a white christian no you're either a christian or you're not and, and that's and, what we need to really focus and this on this is where the problem comes in when i look at the church contemporarily you know, mm-hmm. uh, i'm focusing on, on the church in america is that we are so busy trying to be culturally relevant. Right. <laughs> that we are failing to identify with Christ. Right. Culturally relevant to a fault. Yeah. We, we are failing to identify with Christ. Mm-hmm. And that is the major problem that I see is that uh, I'm, I want to look so much 
like my unsaved brothers and sisters. I want to be so attractive to them so that they're comfortable with me mm-hmm. to the point of that I remove all the things that make them uncomfortable. Right. Now, that's all fine and dandy, except for what did Christ say about offense? The cross is an offense. Right. You know what gets me? I always think about this, that Jesus, Jesus, the Son of God, okay. who dwelt among us, right? He would have dinner. He would hang around prostitutes, tax collectors, uh-huh, uh-huh. basically people that would be considered the scum of the earth. Right. <laughs> but he hung around them, and they got saved. The people who were shouting him down were typically the more religious folk, right? And, and, and the key is, is that he never excused sin. He never did, but he. What my point I was trying to make is the fact that he never compromised. He never, he never excused sin. No, you know, when the he woman, never, he never excused sin. But what I was saying is this: the point I was trying to make is he talked to people in the world. Right. He never compromised himself. Right. But they still came to him, and they were still interested because they were like, what because he had he was genuine love. That they he gave have. them an answer. Right. And it wasn't just oh, feel guilt, guilt or whatever. It was an answer now, to their when, when he depravity. Found a woman, who was caught in adultery. He didn't make her feel about being an, uh, feel good about being an adulteress. Mm-mm. He didn't say, what's that word they're talking about now? Uh, uh, empowering women. What's that thing they're talking about? What are going to take? It? Not sex trafficking, but now it's sex workers. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. They're going to legitimize evil. He mm-hmm. didn't say, you know what? You just, a, you just a liberated woman, girl. You go ahead and do your thing. <laughs> you just acting like a man. No, he, he didn't go there. He said, go and sin no more. Right. You see, one of the things we talked about, I heard this, <laughs> I heard this today in a conversation and it was said jokingly, but I, I, it, it was in a conversation that I was not a part of, but I was close enough to hear it. And uh, this one brother said to this young lady, he, he said something that was slightly corrective of her. And, and she said, don't judge me. And I looked at that. I thought, oh, yeah, that is the new mantra, right? Don't judge don't, me. Don't uh, judge me. You better me. hope somebody Only God judge can you. judge me. I know that should scare you. should scare you. It should scare you. Judge yourself. But unless think you about it. If you're doing something wrong, don't you want somebody to tell you that you're doing something wrong? Personally, yes. I, I would mean, like you to tell you me. You just keep letting people go on in wrong. Right. And, and then, then we wonder why oh, we feel bad when they crash and burn. What'd you expect? And I won't call this young lady's name because I don't want to explore her situation in the situation of her family. But a young black girl uh, was uh, recently in the news and she was beat to death by some oh, fellow yeah. students, okay. elementary age mm-hmm. student, beat to death by fellow students, beat, kicked. And, and apparently there were people nearby because people said, I heard her saying, stop, stop, stop. I'm just, She's like middle school, too. Yeah. And I'm looking she? at this and I'm going, OK, you were there. You were there. You heard it and saw it happen. And you let it happen. And you did nothing to stop it. Oh, that's just one level of the problem. The other problem is is that now we have kids who are at this age thinking it's okay mm-hmm. to use this level of violence to solve whatever their problem was. Right. And I commented in the conversation that I was a part of that at the bottom of this, uh, it's not a social problem. Mm-mm. This is a Jesus problem. Yeah. Because we are not observing the law, the high law of God. Mm-hmm. Uh, and James, it talks about the, the, the high law, the golden law, to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Right. Uh, going back to what Jesus gave, right? Love the Lord your God, all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. So if we're not being trained in these things, in other words, if we continue to allow people to be raised as animals, mm-hmm. then we have to come to right. the point where we expect them to act like animals. Yeah. But we can't just be upset after the fact. No, I think as believers, we are called to call things out, especially in one another, like in other believers. I remember when the Black Lives Matter movement first started. Oh, and I got, started. I know, I got in a conversation with an old classmate because he was all in, into it, the Black Lives Matter. Mm-hmm. And I was saying... You know, what people hate is if you say all lives matter, they're like, that's that's not the point. You're not missing the point. I'm like, no, I'm not because you're missing the point. Right. The truth is it is. It's a sin problem. I told him I was like, it's a sin problem. A sin it problem. is the disease of being a human being. And, and it started and it's, in, the you know, garden. it started in the garden. And so it's not a black lives matter issue. And even if you look at the stats, it's really like not what they all make yeah. it sound to be. As uh, Candace you know? Owens so, uh, 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 says so often is that the odds of a black off, a black 
guy being murdered or shot down by a police officer is less than the odds of that same person being struck by lightning. Yeah. So the media makes it seem like it's so much when really it's not. I remember having this conversation with members of my own family uh, back during the Ferguson situation, which mm-hmm. was a total blown out of proportion lie. Oh, yeah. OK. When I say lie, did the black guy get shot? Absolutely. But look at the circumstances around uh, But the around, circumstances was that he was it, in the yeah. commission of a crime, right. had attacked the police officer, and then was shot during that fight. And it's with, sad. It's sad. But it's always sad. But say, just tell the truth life. is a thing. But you know? the point that I make is that less than a week after that, mm-hmm. uh, less than a week after that, an almost exact situation happened uh, not five or six hours from where we are here now in, in, uh, in uh, Boise, Ada County, Idaho, Canyon County, Idaho. About six hours away in Utah, outside of Salt Lake, almost an identical situation happened. In this case, though, it was a white teenager Hmm. who had just committed a crime, was confronted by a black police officer. The scuffle happened, and the black police officer shot the white teenager. Huh. And killed him. That doesn't make for good news. It didn't even make the news. Oh, see? Yeah. Had I not been working as a law enforcement officer, I would not have known that happened. Right. You see? It didn't even make the news. It just, it was like, what, what, what? This is like six, seven days, nine days after Ferguson, where the, it was such a bad thing. Of police cop, brutality. Yeah, police and brutality. Like, this is the lie. When mm-hmm. we start talking about a skin tone and, 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 and race or ethnicity in that capacity, I understand when the world does it because the world is governed by Satan. Right. Okay. I think this is another thing that we forget, especially here in America, is that when we look at America as a whole, uh, as a whole, I'm sorry, we forget that it's part of the world system. Oh, yeah. We were founded, and, and I know people want to go back and start saying America was never great. That's it's just the stupid. best nation in That's the just, world. I've traveled the world. I'm sorry. Now, uh, this is what I want to tell people. <laughs> when you travel the world, you can't travel the world as a a rich tourist and see the world because you don't see the world that way. I, I, my <laughs> You're right. You been, see resorts. Yeah, we've way. been, yeah, we've been uh, supporting uh, a child and an orphanage down in Sri Lanka now for 30 plus years. And mm-hmm. so we've been in touch with this this ministry down there in Sri Lanka. And I remember watching, uh, this was back when uh, Nicole Kippen and, and Tom Cruise were still married. And they did this big special on how I wonderful they were married. Sri Lanka was. <laughs> well, and it was all over the news. About how it's a great, it was the greatest country. Everybody, and this is, should be. And it was you know, elevating Sri Lanka like America was this horrible place. And I'm like, when you're living in a five $600 a night hotel room and everybody's waiting on you hand and foot, yeah, it's great. <laughs> But I also know that in Sri Lanka, there's people who are barely making a living. Right. And where you spend $600 a day, they may make a dollar a day if they're doing good. Mm-hmm. And so this this is a warped view that we have where we see what we want to see. Right. And so when we say America is great, yes, America is great. And when we say make America great again, you cannot fall into the trap of, that, of, of this limited mentality. Mm-hmm. We're talking about greatness from the perspective of godly godly to make it great so yes things like abortion needs to go away yeah things like we talk about you know uh you reference here again black life matters Mm -hmm. all the noise they're making i haven't seen one protest over that little girl who was who was stomped to death no she's all all the little black kids who are killed in their neighborhoods it's like you don't hear that you see nothing from or even um black lives matter you know there's what over 800 black babies a day who are aborted come on think if black lives really matter that movement should be protesting abortion clinics was it about (laughs) three and a half percent of the nation's population accounting for 35 percent yeah we talked about that last time so it's like where's black lives Lives matter there so when we get into this stupidity right we start talking about this this white guilt ryan I love you, brother, and I don't want you feeling guilty. You do you, you boo. Feel it's okay. No. It's okay. <laughs> so uh, I don't want you to go there. Okay, we're good, right? He okay, he doesn't feel guilty. Or he said, "Yeah, I don't know, but you know, he may be just hiding his guilt." No, he may like I don't know. I can be guilt around black folks. No, I don't know. So you I know, don't he, know. here's one sure. thing that I I really have no, I've noticed that it's so funny when people try to like there are issues that are in the black community that black people will understand, right? But especially in light of being a believer. There are human issues. Right. So what's a black issue should be an issue to everybody. It is an issue. What's an issue for white people should be an issue for every believer because ultimately it comes down to human issues. And here's here's the the rub. When you you think of it this way, now look at it. We know, 
and I'm going to say it again for purposes of discussion, mm-hmm. what is the single biggest indicator of juvenile delinquency? What's, if we want to look at something that's happening in Fatherless life, homes. Fatherless homes. And that's in black, white, Chinese. It don't make no difference, mm-hmm. right? That's a human issue. Why? Because that's God's pattern. Yeah, and you can see it. It's God's when, pattern. When, that's right. Uh, yeah, when you do it God's way, it, it makes sense. It just makes there sense. There is a pattern to it, and, and it works. And, and there's a reason why you look at those stats, and it does. It always goes back to an absentee father. You know, you, we, we, one of the things I do as part of my job description is I create tests. And we have a, a, a type of question called multiple choice. Multiple choice. And uh, it, it really should be called multiple options because there's only one real choice because everything else is wrong. <laughs> and, and multiple <laughs> options because the, the, the point of the matter is is that you may have three four five slots that are available a b c d right. or e but the reality is only one of those exactly is correct right. yeah. now it doesn't matter how much you like the other ones mm-hmm. it doesn't matter how many people you get to vote for the other ones it doesn't matter how popular the other ones are or how sweet the other ones are it does, none of that matters the only thing that matters is mm-hmm. whether or not you chose the correct one so it doesn't matter that you can choose the wrong answer. Well, you know, I had all my friends did it. They thought it was right, too. <laughs> so it's still wrong. <laughs> but they were cheering me on. <laughs> you know, I, I was watching the playoff game the other day. And uh, uh, who was it? Uh, which te- I can't remember which team it was now. My brother, the Warriors? Uh, he drove to the basket, right? He had a great – it was – was uh, What's the Warrior uh, game? Tom, uh, what's his name? The Babyface Assassin. Babyface assassin. Yeah, Golden State Warriors. Who? Steph. Steph Curry. That's him. He's you know, a babyface he, assassin. Yeah, that's what they call him. I was, never knew that's what they call him. She's been educated, y'all. Anyway, <laughs> that's so funny. Steph babyface. Curry, right? He's been in a shooting slump. Everybody knows he's been in a shooting slump, right? He had this hard move. He was choo 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 ball between his legs behind his back, and he goes to the basket, does his layup. Woo! And it just missed the rim. <laughs> it just missed the rim. Shame. And I was like, I can see everybody in Golden State going, "Oh, but it looks so good." <laughs> he had this move. He got past the defender. He went between his legs around his back, and he laid the ball and up. And he still You should give him like one point for that. No, it's got to go through the hoop. Right. If it don't go through the hoop, guess what? It ain't worth nothing. Sorry about that microphone. It ain't worth nothing. Mm-hmm. That's the whole problem we have right. is that we want to give these, you know, empathy points, mm-hmm. these participation points. In the real world, that don't count. Right. So when we prop these things up, when we prop these false standards up, on the back side of it is death mm-hmm. and injury. Right. You know, we look at this whole big lie behind this, this, this question of this white guilt, especially as it relates to black people. What it is doing is encouraging victimhood. Mm-hmm. So I become this victim yeah. that I need somebody to take care of me. Or, the, or people owe you something. To deliver me. I need somebody to watch out for me to make it happen. And it's like, you know what? No. Mm-mm. No. You can God do it. Has Get up. <laughs> me with a body that has reasonable strength, a mind that has reasonable intelligence. Right. Give me a job and let me work. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, this is, well, when this happened, you were just a baby, uh, two and a half years old. But uh, I, when I worked in Orange County Sheriff's Department, I was selected to be a part of the Orange County Sheriff's Department Affirmative Action Board. Hmm. Now, you know what affirmative action yeah. is, right? Are you familiar with that, Ryan? Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'm on the board, right? And so we're starting to do this. And I'm looking at the numbers. And I realized that at the time, uh, blacks represented about 5% of the black population of Orange County. The total population? Total black. Total population was 5%. Of County, it was about 5%. And we were at the time at about 7 to 9% representative with, as employees within the or- 80 County. Sheriff's so you department. wanted the we department above, to be like we representative the of percent. the. That's how affirmative action works. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. That's what we hear all talk about now, right? We need more female directors. We need female stars. It's like, how about you get somebody who can do the job? <laughs> exactly. Well, anyway, we're sitting here, and uh, I'm watching this, <laughs> and I'm in these meetings, right? And I realize that as we're talking, this is what this is a conversation we had with this big board, mm-hmm. and there's everybody there. I mean, representatives of the highest up political office in the county. And we're having this conversation. It's okay. We're over the percentage for blacks represented in the, in the, in the county. So we don't need to hire any more blacks. However, if you can hire a black female, we can get credit for females. So here's the point. I need you to recruit black females. So I raised my hand. I said, let me ask you a question. They said, yeah, yeah. I said, so what you're telling me is that you're not looking for black guys. No. 
But if you got a black female, you want to hire. He said, this was a quote. If she can chew bubble gum and walk, get her an application. <laughs> That's a direct Are you quote. Serious? And so what? I'm going back to my constituents oh, and I pathetic. say, guys, we need to vote on affirmative action. And I'm advising you to vote no. And they're like, no, we, we need affirmative action. Because no. it's been grained in their heads, right? I'm telling you. And so I explained oh. to them. I looked at them. This is what I, I said, guys, have you realized that the girls that you graduated from the academy with are already gra- promoted above you? They go, well, yeah, they're always oh getting promoted. Oh, my gosh. This, like, blows my mind. You know why it makes me so irritated? Go ahead. If you look at just colleges really across the United States, women, like, typically universities, it's like more than half are women, mm-hmm. females. And that's great. I'm happy that women can go get an education. I encourage them to. Sure, go ahead. If you want to further your education, that's great. But the issue is, what I'd hate is it's at the expense of other people. Right. And we see this happening with white and black issues too. Let's make black people feel more apart at the expense of white people. You know, really? Oh, let's, let's have women, let's raise women and, you know, but at the expense of their babies. Let's have them kill their babies. Right. What? Like this? No. It's, Why it's can't The whole it, thing is crazy. I just don't that get mentality it. mentality is, is crazy. It's brokenness. I finally got the generation that I worked with to see the light. And they actually voted against affirmative wow. action at that time. Because I told them, guys, they're not hiring black people. Do you understand that? Minority females are being hired at the expense of everybody else. Minority females are being promoted at right. the expense of everybody else. And they were like, well, yeah, all these girls are getting promoted. I said, exactly. Because affirmative action demands it. Right. It demands that I get females. It's a so quota. I get, it's a quota. I got it's a not about a female, the person, really. And if I got a female, quote, unquote, of color, as if white folk aren't a color. I don't know how they, they get that anyway. I know. I was but, like, pretty sure they might yeah. be kind of pink. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you leave them in the sun. Ouch! <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure you'll get over it. But anyway, no. <laughs> if you don't, I'll get you a I bunny. I guess I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you killed your last bunny. I'm not giving you no bunny. <laughs> puppies. That's what they're doing now on college campuses. During finals week, they bring puppies. Uh, I heard that they had have, puppies No, they, they did. They I had it when um, Trump was elected. And then they also, just during finals week now. Victims. Because Let's make more you know, victims I just need because America puppy. needs more victims. We don't have enough puppy. people crying and whining instead of working. Now, let me just, for the record, there's nothing wrong with petting puppies. But if you need to pet a puppy in order to like live your you know, life, that's let me, a problem. Let me say this. There's a time <laughs> to pet a help. puppy. If you're supposed to be taking a finals exam, you don't need to be petting no puppy. No, between, Go take the it's exam. It's between exams. <laughs> between <laughs> exams. Oh, 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 crack me up. <laughs> Folk drive me crazy with the stupidity. I have a say. I have two rules. I have two rules that I go by. This is two rules. Uh, and that I try to capsulize my life when I talk to people. I know the one first of them. R- <laughs> Can I say it? Go ahead. What are- uh, don't enter into other people's crazy. That's, don't <laughs> enter. And that's, that's the second one. The first oh, rule is oh. it ain't real. Oh, yeah. That's fun, too. It ain't real. This, the, it ain't real. You see all these rules mm-hmm. and you hear people talk. Just look look at the whole Planned Parenting, right? We love people, especially ethnic groups. But yet it's not <laughs> real. <laughs> At the end of the day, what's happening? The black population is decreasing. It is losing its population growth in size. We're we're diminishing ourselves by believing a lie. I'll tell you why. Secondly, if you you can be any kind of crazy you want to be, I am all for you being you, boo. Do do you. But don't insist that I go crazy with you. You see what I'm saying? (laughs) If you want to drive your car off the cliff, let me out first. That's all I'm saying. (laughs) Let me off. Don't insist. Don't insist that I go off the cliff with you to make you feel good about it. Right. So this is what I'm talking about. And and when I hear, especially people who are supposed to be Christian leaders, Mm -hmm. repeating obvious lies, it takes me right back to Romans 1. It takes me right back to Romans 1 Mm -hmm. where it says they have rejected the wisdom of God. They knew God, but but refused Mm -hmm. to acknowledge him as God. Now think about that concept. They refused to acknowledge him as God. As God. Now, on a much lower scale, you hear people say what? Not my president. Yeah. Same thing, right? They see him, <laughs> but no. they refute. Now, y'all going to get all crazy and say, I call Trump God. I did not go there, okay? <laughs> what I said was a principle of people who look at the facts and then refuse to acknowledge the facts as they are. Right. That, y'all got me? No, I don't want nobody. Well, go ahead and send me the comments. I read all your comments, and, and I appreciate them. Don't get me wrong. Like and subscribe and then send me comments. We'll we'll deal with that. I'll answer them all. I'll pray for you. Uh, but, That's good. It's a good thing. But you know, truth is truth. Truth it has is. to matter. Right. 
And you talk to people, and you can tell when they ain't got no argument because they start talking about you. Well, you stupid. <laughs> like, it's personal. It's like, it's personal. What? We're supposed to be talking about, you know, this issue. Now, right. you know, you stupid. You know, but the thing that gets me, especially with, like, prominent Christian leaders. Supposedly. And, what, well, well, here's what bothers me about it is because, like, the example of Beth Moore getting on the, the white supremacy train. Mm-hmm. Evil's evil, and let's call it evil. That's good. See, but what I is. what I don't like is the fact that it's it's cherry picked to be socially relevant. Right. She's okay getting on the white supremacy wagon because that's popular, and people will be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if she were to say something about abortion, that would be a little too hot button. Right. Or if she were to say that, um, you know, well, as long as she was for abortion, because well, what okay. she was saying yeah. was that there are people who are trying to justify white supremacy with the Bible, and that that's just not there's no biblical grounds for that. I was like, yeah, there's also no biblical grounds for justifying homosexuality, but pastors are doing that, mm-hmm. and you're not calling that out. Right. And so what gets me is that a lot of people they're only talking about hot button issues that are culturally relevant and, and that they feel that it's safe. it's safe. And I was like, no, if you're going to make, if you have a platform and you're going to stand for righteousness, preach the gospel, preach the gospel and preach keep it true. Talk and don't truth. try to just get followers. You know, because and, and, and this <laughs> brings me back to the point I, I mentioned earlier to you. This is something, like I said, as I've been just meditating in Romans chapter one this week and this concept of, Knowing God, Mm -hmm. but refusing to acknowledge him as God is we talk about systemic racism. Okay, I don't believe that's true. I don't think we have systems of racism in America anymore. Mm -mm. Um, But this is is systemic within the church, this refusing to acknowledge God as God. Mm -hmm. I hear Christians, people I know who go to church every Sunday. I know people who send their kids to church every Sunday. Who sing in the choir, serve in the church who then will say publicly, boldly, that you should kill your baby, that women should have the right to kill their babies. Mm -hmm. Now, we've come so far down the drain in this conversation. Back in the 70s, when uh, abortion was just uh, legalized, and I remember hearing about the conversation as I was becoming an older kid in high school and going through that, Mm -hmm. And it was still just kind of a, oh, abortion, what's that? You know, because it wasn't really a talked about a lot. But then as I got more educated and more involved in the conversation, um, people would say, well, it's not really a baby. Right. It's not really a baby. It's just a clump of cells. And that never made any sense to me. Even just a couple of weeks ago, this gal had said that on uh, CNN. Oh my gosh! They still um, telling that. Yeah, Como, or whatever his name is, was interviewing her, and she's like, "What is inside a woman when she like when she's pregnant? It is not a baby; it's a part of her body." And I'm like, "Okay, that is stupid. That's dumb. That's like totally against science." That but so yeah, stupid. so people still say that, and, even and, though it's, it's been like it, obviously it's, it's one of those things it's where it's like it's so dumb. Mm-hmm. And I always go back to this. I always go back to this. Jesus, you are a child of God, Christian. Mm-hmm. And can you imagine Jesus telling people, kill your baby? Or not even that, telling people, you know what, it's okay. If, it, if it's inconvenient or the baby was conceived in a terrible circumstance, if you, you know, it's okay for you to do that. Baby. He wouldn't. You know? I think about this all the time. I was asked this by another family member, you know, if, if, if re- referencing you at the time and you weren't there, but they said, well, if, if Jordana got raped, would you tell her to have the baby? I said, you know what? I would never condone abortion. Mm-hmm. Is that I don't see how you could love a baby. That was the, the product of rape. Um, I said, please look sweetheart. back to. I said, sweetheart. look at all these light skinned black folk in this country. Where do you think they come from? I <laughs> from said, masters that oh, raped their slaves. We got a slaves. lot of black women who were forced into master's bed during the time of slavery. Right. And guess what? Those babies were conceived and, and loved they were by delivered their and they were loved by their mamas. I said, don't tell me you can't love a child. I said, don't even want to hear that. Uh, well, am I, is it going to make you remember the rape? I, I don't right. think a woman who was raped is going to have trouble remembering the fact that she was raped. Now, I'm not belittling the rape. Don't get me wrong. I am not. And I would not wish that on anyone. I did Mm-mm. sex crimes investigation for 10 years in this valley. And I know the horrors, horrors that come along with that. Right. But we don't want to add to that horror by adding murder. And trauma, it. because, uh, you know, I, I, did, people don't oftentimes talk about the situations in which women, they have an abortion. Right. And just the guilt or the, the regret and, and, and that the they lies. feel, you know. Because it's that like, lie comes back to you. Right. Eventually, you're going to feel that. I don't care who there you are. This, Eventually, uh, you know what you did. There was a line in the movie Unplanned that really was 
really stuck with me. Which one was that? Um, and Abby Johnson's character in the movie, after she had left Planned Parenthood, mm-hmm. and she was standing at the at the gate of the clinic, and this right. gal was going in to get an abortion, and she had stopped her and said, "You can get rid of your baby, but you'll, you'll never get rid of the memory of the your baby." Memory of your baby. And That's I was just like, "Oh, you know." But um, Doctor James she Dobson said one time, I was, I was listening to this program, uh, Focus on the Family. He said, "Science has created." The, the birth control pill and they have a number of different types of contraceptives to prevent pregnancy mm-hmm. well he's cut down on, on the chance of pregnancy he said but they have never created a condom for the mind and I remember hearing that and it was such a profound statement mm-hmm. to me because we the Bible says you have sown to the wind and you have reaped the whirlwind right and you look at what we call the sexual revolution in America in the late 60s. We sown to the wind, mm-hmm. sown to the wind. And what have we reaped as a result of it? I, I mentioned last time when, on that presentation on America's story when on the decade of the 80s when they mm-hmm. were dealing with the AIDS epidemic and one that's representative of the AIDS, uh, of the homosexual population uh, out of uh, San Francisco said, we had pushed the limits so far and now even nature had turned against us. Right. And and I'm looking at it. We sown to the to the wind. What do we we reap the whirlwind? Right. And now we've come to the place. We've come so far in this line of stupidity where we can't just go to truth. Where we're celebrating now converts is celebrating in as as a great event. An 11 year old child who's working as a strip tease artist. Oh yeah, shoes and and gay porn bars. Yeah, it's and, like- and gay stripping. Mm-hmm. Stripping. Now, this is an 11 year old boy who's a transgender identifier or, who's yeah. stripping. This is a sex show. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I'm still wondering how is his parents not in prison? That is child abuse. And, and, and how are these establishments where he's working not shut down? Mm-hmm. I have put people in jail for those very things. For these things. Isn't that nuts? This but it's is, because this Converse. I mean, now it's like a big trafficking. company, but it's. Yeah, this is child sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. And yet we want to celebrate it. See, we are reaping the whirlwind where right now you have parents who are so caught up in this this violent wind. This is like a Dorothy Gale from Wizard of Oz. Everything's ripped up and it's turning. And they're like, I don't know whether my child is a a girl. Maybe I just (laughs) wait until they decide themselves. Look between their legs. You can tell whether it's a boy or a girl. It's not Uh, that hard. We've been doing it for years. We've been doing it for centuries. Right. It's not hard. Right. It, it, yet now we are so sophisticated. We're like, I don't know whether it's a boy or a girl. Then you don't. This is a baby that's up for adoption. Because you're too stupid <laughs> to be a parent. It's just, that's just dumb. It's but, actually really sad. But like, we it call it sophistication. Sad. You know, when I was a child in school, literally a child, we learned that he had these lessons in school. Aesop fables. Oh, yeah. The king's, the king's new, new robe, the king's new clothes. And this whole point of the story is this king is so vain that these two swindlers came in and convinced the king they were making him this finest garment. And they had this, this old this magic thread and they were just taking the king's money, taking the king's money, taking the king's money. And he's like, oh, we want to be ready. He's so excited. He gets his new clothes on. He has a big parade. The whole village comes out and everybody's so intimidated by the king. They're like, yay. Even though yay! the emperor oh, has no He's walking down the street and this little boy looks at his mama and say, Mama, why does the king not have on any clothes? And then the king finally goes, Ugh. you know, and it was like, don't be stupid. Right. Moral of the lesson. But now, <laughs> now we have people going, I don't know whether it's a boy or a girl. Everybody's going, oh, oh, these parents are so smart. Going, and it goes no. beyond that, too. Anything. It seems like instead of just telling you, actually, no, you're wrong and you're hurting yourself. We're right. going to be like, you know what? I'm just going to give you the benefit of the doubt and see how it ends. Yes. And it's, it's like, this, no, let's stop people from hurting themselves. But, and it goes back to what we just read. When you see God. Right. And, and the Lord knows, I, I, I know we're laughing, but I'm trying to convey a point. When you see God and you know who God is, but you refuse to acknowledge him as God, you come up with alternative truths, mm-hmm. which is of itself. Oxymoronic. There's, a, there's truth and then there's non-truth. Right. So. There's no such thing as alternative truth. When we acknowledge, we, we refuse to acknowledge God as God. Mm-hmm. 
then all we have left is stupidity. You know, I talk yeah. to my, uh, my, my brothers and sisters who are black in America. I talk to in various groups. And we talk about the history, even uh, of our own history in this nation. And we refuse to acknowledge it because we seem to we have an, uh, an allegiance we owe to the Democratic Party. Even though you look at these, these cities where Democrat policies have ruled. That was have just ruled disastrous. Chicago, Detroit, Detroit, yeah, Detroit Atlanta's on its way there now. Mm-hmm. Where we had these Democrat rule right now in New York. And you look at this and you're going, these cities are falling apart. Mm-hmm. They're corroding. But yet there are those elites who are doing very well. Right. And do you see how it starts with like a moral corrosion? Yes. It's, it's, it's always, that's how it always begins. It's, this, it's moral corrosion. And then you start seeing it in your, just the infrastructure of the place you live. It, fall, it apart. all falls apart. We look at the, the fall of Rome. There were seven steps that led to that. Yeah, one. Mm-hmm. Are we coming to the end already? Yep. Oh, that's one thing about a good bus ride. You know, it comes down to the end. Well, what can I say? Other than the fact that when you refuse to acknowledge God mm-hmm. as God, you got nothing left. Right. All you got is stupidity. Uh, look here, I'll give you the last two minutes. Wrap it up. Tell me something good. Tell me something. T- Jesus is Lord. <laughs> I think the big thing to remember here and for every believer to really do is to be a believer first. Mm. You know, pursue God. I was talking to a friend just this yesterday, and we were talking about you will have as much of God in your life as you want. As you want and that's to. the truth of it. And I think we're living in a time right now, I'm like, what a time to be alive. There's so much potential, even just in our nation right now, of the church to rise up um, and stand for righteousness in any arena. People oftentimes like to compartmentalize, thinking uh-huh. like, here's my Christian life, and as a Christian, I'm not going to stay in politics. Like, that's just not my place. I don't have an opinion. No, have an opinion, but and it better be rooted in the truth. And guess what? You word. are called to stand up for it. And I think word. that's uh, something to really to remember and rise up, stand for righteousness, go out. That's what I'm talking Make about. Make a difference. Whew, word. I can preach on that. Yeah, <laughs> me too. All right. Well, we're going to call <laughs> this one done. Hey, I thank you guys for stopping by and visiting with us here. Oh, thank you always for coming. Always a good time. Thanks. Yeah. You Anytime. know, it's just really good to sit here and just exchange thoughts with you because I can feel your passion. I feel your love. And that, as your father, that makes me feel like, well, we got hope. We got hope. These young people have. <laughs> Have something to live for. So until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. you too. Remember, and you? stop by, subscribe, like. Let's help. Leave help some this, comments this and questions. Great. Let's get this conversation yeah, started. Dialogue. Let's have an honest conversation because I think the truth will out. Other than that, peace.